Okay, I wanted to start off by asking about shooting in London. Um, how did you go about maximizing London's cinematic potential and uh, making it unique to other films? Um, by spending a lot of time driving north, south, <laughs> east and west and finding locations that were not only visually interesting and sort of hopefully free of cliché or free of anything which felt like a picture postcard London, um, but which was also, which, which sort of expressed something thematically for the film um, in terms of wanting to develop a palette which felt like this side of London which is about surveillance London. And I think, you know, London, like any great city, will reflect back at you what you want to see in it, and um, that's the side of it that we wanted to pull out. Gotcha. Would I, would I be right in thinking that the idea, the goal here, was to sort of start a dialogue on the inner workings of the justice system as opposed to providing definitive answers? Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. The film doesn't... Um, the film poses questions rather than set, setting out a, a sort of... Um, an agenda um, or making the case for something, but it does point out the dangers of um, having a closed court system, um, and that's not the reason for making the film. It's one of the one of the aspects of the film, which is is to suggest that um, a legal system which isn't fully transparent is is open to abuse. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, you've been successful in both theatre and film. Um, what would you say is the biggest difference between stage directing and film directing? Um, kind of everything, actually. Yeah, <laughs> basically, I mean, you know, when you when you direct theatre, it's all about the actors in the text, and uh, if that is, if if you are working with the text, not not always, but I mean, I do usually work with a with a with a playwright, um, and it is about creating the conditions under which a fresh performance can happen eight times a week, and that's very different to what you're after in, in a film where you're after one moment captured and it doesn't matter how you get to that moment um, and it doesn't matter necessarily what words are spoken in that moment, it, it just matters that that moment expresses the truth for that shot which will cut with another shot and um, so it and then of course the whole editing element of film is, is something that you just simply don't get to do in the theatre, it just doesn't happen, theatre is a much more open form in the sense that the audience comes and brings its own interpretation to events but will choose where to look maybe with a bit of guidance from you on, mm -hmm. on the stage but the whole editing process in film which is sort of essentially cinematic that you swap the order of a few shots and the meaning completely alters is is radically different mm -hmm. but for me working with actors in both media I mean that is the uh, um, that is the great sort of combination I guess, um, uh, and it's it's a good consistency for me between them. And but um, but at the same time, I mean, it's you're still just telling stories, whether you you know, you're just in, with actors. Are you planning on doing more of, of both, or are you uh, staying in the film? I will room? until somebody tells me I'm not allowed to anymore. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I just did a play at the Donmar Warehouse over the summer after I finished post production on on Closed Circuit, and I'm going to go back and do a film next year. So. Okay. Uh, certainly a number of scenes I could see working well in theatre. I mean, yeah. when you're filming, do you get that impression? Um, I guess that, that it's never far away from me because I, I did spend 12 years directing in the theatre before I ever got behind a camera, so it's sort of second nature to me. I know in previous interviews you've alluded to the fact that there's such a great wealth of uh, good television yeah. being made and a lot of them are sort of uh, existing grey areas as, as your film does mm. uh, but Homeland probably being the most prudent example um, when it comes to making a film with sort of similar material is mm. it an added challenge then to hugely so because yeah. it's you, you don't have an audience that you can necessarily rely on you have to mm. talk them away from their TV screens yeah. um, and uh, yeah you have to sort of raise the game cinematically and hopefully you know, I mean, we shoot one sequence from 12 points of view simultaneously, the opening yeah. sequence, and, and, and that's something which wouldn't work so well on TV. So you have to try and use the scale of the palette that you're developing, you know, that you're working with. Uh, I know you've been asked this question uh, when you're in the US, so, but now that the film has come to the UK, have you received any uh, reaction from the British government or any other Brits? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> not yet, anyway. <laughs> okay. Although I don't know where that camera came from. So <laughs> okay, well, big job on this film. It was good talking to you. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Evan.